Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars, inviting you to worship with us today at Bible Home Church, coming to you from Austin, Texas. Praise God. It's another day to worship the Lord in message and in song. So good to be with you. If you want to become a member of Bible Home Church and participate with us regularly, we would love to have you as a member, no matter where you're at. We have a membership at large throughout the world. We'd like you to join with us and be one with us. As you know, we're working hard to promote the home church movement across the world. What is it? What is the home church movement? We're going to talk about that today. A lot of people ask me, can I start a church in my home? Yes, you can. And the early Christian church, in fact, met in homes. Where was the church at Jerusalem? Was there a, a church building called the Church of Jesus at Jerusalem? I don't think so. How about at Ephesus and Rome? Do you think that they went down to 105 South Main and there set a church and it says the Church of Rome? I don't believe that. No, I don't think so because the Bible doesn't tell me that. No, the early Christians met in their homes. And all the Christians of one city or another were called Christians in that city. They were called the church. The church at Philadelphia. The church of Sardis. The church at Jerusalem. The church of Laodicea. The church, and it goes on and on. The many churches that were founded, for example, by the Apostle Paul. We are, of course, of one great church and body that is of Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't need huge buildings or luxurious appointments. We don't need recreation directors or uh, financial advisors, psychologists, counselors, social directors, youth directors, janitors, and the whole melange of uh, <laughs> employees to worship God. But one thing we do need, we need His Word. It says in the book of Amos, Amos there will be a great famine in the last days. You say, well, Tex, I read your book, Days of Hunger, Days of Chaos. I know that. No, 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 you've got it all wrong. That's the food for your body. But I'm talking about a greater kind of food, a greater sustenance, a famine of the preaching of the Word of God. That's what it says in the book of Amos in the Old Testament. In the last days there will be a great famine of the preaching of the Word of God. Well... That sure is being fulfilled today, isn't it? Everywhere you turn, there seems to be a famine. And the word that is being preached is so strange and bizarre, you can't find it in the Word of God, and it's just something made up in, well, it's man-invented imaginations. Where is the church of the true living God? You know, I like Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, happy is the man who takes refuge in the Lord. A lot of churches, you know, say we are sanctuaries. I hope they are. But you can sit right there in your home, maybe you and your wife, you and your friend, or you alone. And you can take refuge in the Lord. Happy is the man who takes refuge in the Lord the Lord. Some people say, oh, I want to go down to my local church and pray. Really? Is that the refuge you seek? You know, an earthquake could come today and destroy that building entirely. The question really is not, is the building where you go to, that place, the true church? The question is, does the true God inhabit it? I've always loved the verse in the Old Testament that says that God inhabits 
his praises. Did you know that if you praise God, God will actually inhabit your praises? Wow. You see, I think God inhabits his thanks. And I think if you thank God, God will inhabit your thanks. Oh, I tell you, there's some powerful verses in the Bible. A lot of people say, what do I do? I'm beset with the problem. I start saying, praise God. Praise God. Well, look at the trouble I'm in. <laughs> but God will inhabit your praises. You want God to be close to you? You want to draw his presence to you? Start praising him. And God will come and inhabit those praises. A lot of people ask me about church. You want to know the greatest church that ever existed? The greatest local church, I believe it's found in the Gospels, the Sermon on the Mount. They came there and they were so hungry for the word of God, they, they didn't plan on, uh, on food for their bodies. And God even created food for their bodies as well as for their spirit. Reading again just today about the Pentecost. There they were in the upper room. Jesus, of course, had left them and gone on to heaven and I'm sure they felt so bereft. They felt so, so lost without the Lord. And they were praying and seeking guidance. And I'm telling you, my friends, the Holy Ghost came down. The tongues of, cloven tongue of fire. And whoo, talk about a revival time there. You know, it says that when they began to speak in other tongues and and, and praise the Lord, that people heard them and understood in their own language. A lot of people get that all mixed up. They think it was an unintelligible tongue. But actually, you see, there uh, in Jerusalem, many people came. It was very cosmopolitan at the time. They came from uh, many different nations. And many of them spoke different languages. And, you know, they could understand what was being said in their own language. And yet those speaking it, being led by the Holy Ghost, couldn't even understand it themselves. And because of the words that are, they were evidently the powerful words of God, being spoken in other tongues, in foreign languages, unknown even to the apostles. And you know it says that a great multitude there gathered. I don't believe for a moment. I, I don't know. I, you know, there's no building we can look to and say, there it was. There was the upper room. There's where they met. That building's probably long gone and destroyed by now. Perhaps destroyed by the Roman general Titus in 70 AD when he totally devastated Jerusalem, just as prophesied by Jesus our Lord. But we know this. It's very doubtful that this great multitude crowded up the stairs and went up to the upper room. No, 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 no way. You see, that was a great open-air meeting of the Holy Ghost. That's where church was, wasn't it? Stephen had church, preached on the street. You say, well, that, that's not a church. Oh, yes, it was. He was stoned. Lot preached. He was a preacher, didn't have a, a church building. You know, when the angels came to Sodom there in Gomorrah, they found Lot, it says, at the gate. People say, what does that mean? Was he at the gate there? Was he fixing to leave? Or was he just coming in? No, it was at the gate of the city where many people would meet and discuss the great issues of the day. It was sort of like a town meeting. And there was Lot. You see, Lot was a holy troublemaker. He would go down there and tell people about God and convict them of their sins at the gate. There were people congregated. And I suppose he was probably, when they saw Lot coming, they probably began to curse and profane the name of God. Especially the gays. The homosexuals. Yeah, Lot held church right there in the open air. Now, when Jonah was spit up by that great fish, many people believe it was a whale, but we don't know that for sure, but it was a great fish. He was spit up by that whale there at Nineveh. I doubt if any church invited him in. First of all, he hated the Ninevites, which, of course, was wrong. He wanted them all. <laughs> <laughs> to be destroyed by God. He was so prejudiced. He didn't even want to go there and preach to him. And God spit him out of that, that fish. Had the fish swallow him up and spit him out there. And there he was preaching. Now, friends, I'm telling you, that was church. He was the preacher. 
There, we're, we're talking about some heavy street preaching there about Jonah. And everybody got saved. They all believed. Well, Jonah didn't even like that. He went up and said, God, I'd prefer they'd all died. <laughs> I hope most preachers aren't like that today. They don't look out at their congregations. I wish you all were dead. <laughs> but can you imagine a preacher saying, I wish you guys would just die. I wish God would come down and just bring his fire down and destroy all of you. I bet people would run for the doors of that church when they man alive. What a preacher that was. And yet God sent him. And by the way, God corrected him too. Yes, again, God's rebuke can be a wonderful thing. And God rebuked him and basically put Jonah in his place and said, I'll save whosoever I will. Where do you think the church was at Ephesus? Do you think Paul just came to town and he, he drove around in his chariot till he saw a, a sign that said, Jesus Church at Ephesus? I don't believe that. Well, there were some synagogues, and it does say they went in the synagogues. The only problem was, usually they were not very welcome guests there. Have you ever felt that away, my friends? You go into church, you don't feel very welcome. I felt that away in some churches. They're just cold, dead. And you know, some of them that appear to be alive, people are jumping up and down like they're frogs or rabbits. They're screaming all out their lungs and they're, they're rolling around on the floor and laughing and cutting up and doing all kinds of things in some churches. And they're just as dead. Oh, they appear to be alive. And there's gospel singing and people dancing on stage and holy dancing in the aisles. And they're dead as doornails. You can get just about as much religion by going to a Marilyn Manson concert. Heavy metal. As you can in some of those so-called alive churches. And you know Christians don't feel very welcome at those places. I've been to churches like that. Where people were speaking in tongues. And people were making utterances and groans. And the pastor was getting up and jumping up and down. And they had rock music. And I'll tell you the truth. I felt like I was an unwelcome guest. I felt dirty just by being there. One time I was invited to speak to a great convention of a church counselors and psychologists, Christian psychologists. I went into that chapel. It looked like a church. Had every uh, item of a church. It had pews. It had a, a lectern or a podium or whatever. And the only thing missing from that big congregation of counselors and Psychologists from all over America were Bibles. I looked in their hands and I didn't see one Bible. These people call themselves Christian counselors and psychologists. They made the terrible mistake of inviting Tex Mars to come speak to them. And there they didn't have their ammunition. They were totally unarmed. And let me tell you, I took out my bazooka. I took out my F-16 and it was the Word of God. And I told those those uh, assembled men and some women, that if they didn't use that Word of God, that Bible, as their guide for daily living, they ought to go outside of their office building or wherever it was and take off that name Christian. I told them, you can be a counselor, you can be a psychologist, but don't call yourself Christian. And if you don't counsel people from this Word of God, then you're not a Christian counselor. Well, I may have told you this story before. I was supposed to speak two nights in a row. And they and asked me not to come back the next night. Actually, they let me come back because I was out doing things, very busy witnessing for Christ all day. Came back that night, got there about five minutes before the worship service was supposed to start. They had a representative actually meet me there in the lobby of that church. He met me there. There, there, there I, I, I came to preach. They had it on the agenda. I'd flown all the way from Texas to Florida. They paid my way. I showed up the second night to preach. They had a representative meet me back there, and he said, we've decided we can't allow you to preach anymore. You just offended too many people the first night. Felt very unwelcome. <laughs> and, you know, I went out praising God. I just began to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus for the great things he had done. And I somehow felt that somebody in there was convicted. And, you know, Wanda and I were walking. We'd got about... 50 yards from that church building, we were headed toward our car. And a woman came running out of that church. She came running for us. 
She had come to that church thinking that we were going to be speaking there, that I was going to be speaking. And suddenly the guy got up there and said, friends, we've had a change and and Tex Moore isn't going to speak tonight. We've got another program for you. Well, she had seen me there in the lobby of the church, somebody speaking, and she saw me leave. And I guess she saw me going down the sidewalk and she bolts out of the pew and runs for me. She says, you're not speaking tonight. I said, no, ma'am, I was told they'd prefer not to have me tonight. She said, well, I came here because God put it on my heart to ask you a question. I said, well, praise Jesus. I was sure I was here for a reason. And she says, well, I've got a terrible problem in my church. I go to a local Baptist church here in Florida. And then she began to tell me some things that were going on at that church. And she asked me, were those things scriptural? And I showed her from the word of God that those things were indeed not scriptural. And she better get away from that church fast. And, you know, God witnessed to her heart and she believed my report. And she said, praise Jesus, that that I was able to come here tonight and meet you, Tex Mars. You see, friends, you say, well, wasn't that a failure? Didn't you fail? You went there to preach and all you did was offend about 300 of these people. Weren't you a big failure? That's the way the world sees things. But you see, I was a great success. I, I, I still think back. That was one of the highlights of my ministry. That night they told me I couldn't preach. Well, I'm praying that God somehow convicted the hearts of some of those men and they would return to him. I have a song for you before we go any further. A song by Johnny Ray Watson. He's a good friend of Juan and I. I think he has a voice like angels. I wish I could sing, wish I could preach like Johnny Ray Watson. Here he is. And this song you're going to love. If you've ever, uh, uh, you know, may, maybe at one time or another you were convicted, but you didn't come to Jesus. And then finally you did return. And boy, in tears, you returned to God. Well, here is Johnny Ray singing, I have returned. I think you're going to identify with this, friends.